What do you think the word bless means? Whether Laura shows special attention towards you or gives special attention towards you. All right, the Lord gives special attention to the ones. So the child will lead that. For me, it, it, one word, your favorite. Favorite. Just took mine. <laughs> yeah, I don't even know what to say now. <laughs> okay. Uh, I think bless is uh, knowing that you know through the trials and the temptations of your life, he's never going to leave you. For me, being blessed or blessed means being granted special favors. I would say satisfied, fully satisfied, satisfied. satisfied. Yeah. Right. having good. all you need. Happy, all right, go happy. You, you shout out if you're on the edges out there. You say humble? Okay. Bless humble. The gifts he's given. The gifts he's given. Mm -hmm. All right. So these are good. And a lot of these things, and I really wanted to get y'all's honest opinion because if you go into it, every time we have a, a study or we see a word, we always associate it with something, right? So we want to frame all of our words with something, and we're going to say, well, this is what I think this means. This is what this means to me. This is how I'm applying this to my life right now. So this is a good idea of what blessed looks like as we go through it. So as we go and describe what blessed means, and we continue to move through that, we're going to take a look at what the Bible says. All right, so to understand blessed, one of the best things we can do to really have a Bible study and understand what biblical words mean is to let biblical words define biblical words. All right, so we discussed this before. I think we talked about it last week, how certain words that are in the original language can be ambiguous. So, for example, when Paul is giving instruction to uh, the, the young evangelist, Timothy, and in several places, and he talks about 
I do not have the ability to buy a rock. None of us do. Mankind, we don't rock one another. We can pray for one another, but when we rock somebody else, when we bless somebody else, we're actually God to bless that person. Okay? So I'm looking to be the proxy of a blessing for my brother in Christ by asking God to do it by my request. I'm requesting. Okay? And that's exactly what we saw here in Genesis 27. Isaac is asking God, the Barak, the blessing to come down on him. Now, that's important to understand because when we get to Psalm 1, 1, the first of all, familiar with many of us, blessed is the man who walks not in the council of the ungodly, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the swamp, right? The lights of the law of the Lord, the law of meditation day and night. Blessed. Blessed here. That is not the word Barak. It's actually a different Hebrew word that is used. In Greek, this would be uh, makarios. Okay? Makarios means fortunate, happy, blessed, as you can see. Aramaic, I put on the screen as well, I'm going to look that up, to my queen. Joyful, happy, blessed. And in Hebrew, it's the word ashre. Ashre means joyful, favored by God, and blessed. Now, why do we look like verse here? Bible class. They have to come from vocabulary necessarily. But I'm going somewhere with this. Got to stay with me. It's going all connect together. We need to understand the differences and the nuances between these two. Because when you see the word bless in English, both Barak and Ashray are translated to the same word. That's that ambiguity that I talked about. So when I read the word bless, as we go into the New Testament, when Jesus says it's nine times, which again means it's important. And that's why I went through all the trouble with this research and this study, because he said it so many times. He said it so many times, that means that it is important and we really need to understand what he's talking about. Is you just talking about Barak or Ashre? What's the need? This opinions, right? We're going to study it. Well, what do y'all think? Barak, okay? You know about Ashre? Ashre? Where's the hand team, Ashre? Raise your hand if you've seen Barack. All right. It's okay. <laughs> it's good. It's good. Um, so, as we go through this, and we want to know, what is Jesus talking about? So, if you look at this, we see bless. Bless in Matthew chapter 5, when we're dealing with the word Beatitudes, it is in this context a declaration. It's not a declaration of receiving a blessing, but rather describing the person's state of being. So Jesus is not talking about receiving a blessing when he says, blessed are the poor spirit. Blessed are those who mourn. Blessed are the building that can keep electricity in the house. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We're going to be good. We're going to be good. All right. So uh, you saw that earlier when I was doing a blessing definition. I put Aramaic up there. Now, the reason I put Aramaic, because we're all familiar with Greek and Hebrew as a biblical. Languages. I did Aramaic because Matthew, the one who would have recorded this gospel, recorded it in Greek. But Jesus, who was teaching, would have taught this in Aramaic. And that was the language that was spoken in the Galilean region at that time. So if you know anything about languages, when you consider uh, where you live right now in the United States of America, the language you speak is English. Why do you speak English? language. 
right, so I, I was doing that to really set the foundation of where we're going. Because again, in Matthew chapter 5, blessed is translated as ashray, not rohan. Okay? So Jesus is saying ashray, ashray. Barak is the act of blessing someone, invoking divine favor. When I'm asking for God to give you a blessing, when I'm asking for God to give you faith, that's Barak. I'm asking for Barak from you. Ashray is a little bit different. It's going to describe somebody who's already living in faith. Okay? Barak is asking you to have faith. I will not have faith on you. Ashray is he describing the life that you already have, but you're walking in favor. You're already living a favored life. Okay? So, when you understand the difference between that, it really uh, sort of puts the teaching of the attitudes on its head. Now, I'm going to show you an example of this. Brother Henry, do you come up here for a second? We're going to do a little bit of Ashray role play. All right? He's not hurt. This is all. So, you got to figure out what are going to do here. All right, you, you understand? Ashray? All right, so we understand. Yep. Ashray is when I'm describing somebody else's life. And it's somebody else's life who's already in the flesh. I'm looking at them and I'm saying, man, it's Ashray. So I'm going to start it off. I'm, I'm going to Ashray you and you Ashray me, okay? Okay. All right. So I'm looking. Brother Henry, I say, Ashray is Brother Henry. He's a good looking young man. And he's got it together. He's got a good corporate job. Man, you look at Henry and the fact that he does training and development and a leadership. He's a leader. Ashray, man, that's the good life. I'm trying to describe the good life. It's Ashray as Brother Henry to have all of these credentials and to be in this position of leadership. Ashray, man. That's Ashray. Okay. Ashray Chuck, who has more children than you can count. <laughs> And has been blessed with a loving wife and a loving marriage, and so gifted, so talented. He not only teaches classes, but he's a missionary. He's what we look up to. I straight Chuck. because he leads a mentorship program. Uncle Henry <laughs> takes the time to mentor young men who don't have father figures in their lives. And that is a rock to them. That's how Ashray is living a good life because I think he's a mentor. We're going to keep doing this. Um, Ashray Charles. I forgot, I call him Chuck, but I got to call him John in front of everybody else. Uh, I'll show you Charles, because not only does he give back, but he lives what he teaches, he lives what he preaches, and he's a great example for all that see him, all that around him, and he never says no. He's always giving. He taught today. They made him teach the 40-plus class. They made him teach every class, and he'll never turn it down, because he's always letting God use his talents for the kingdom. God is blessed him. He's walking in favor. 
it's going to really, um, it's going to really reframe the way we think about these BITs. Okay. Um, and I kind of see it just a teeny bit different. Okay. When I was said it was Barack, it says, okay, blessed are the meek. Okay, he, he's saying, and I'm looking at it from Jesus' standpoint, what I said, what I thought was Jesus' standpoint, I can't speak for him. But it's like, okay, you're meek now, but you're going to inherit the earth later. And that's how, I mean, it could go, to me, it would be the or. But I mean, that's, you know, with me, I, when I read the Beatitudes, it's like, Blessed are those who hunger. You know, that's something to aspire to. And the reason why is because later on, you know, you're going to be rewarded. Outlook? Um, generally, yes. It's a positive outlook, but it's based on the way that I see things. Right, because, like, when I was reading, uh, blessed are the, you know, the poor in spirit, I'm like, highly favored, or rock, are the poor in spirit. But you're saying, Ashray, hey, you know, good times are the poor in spirit. That's right. That's what he's saying. Like you said, it's all flipped up, dude.
we set our minds to what the good life really looks like. Because it's easy for me to go around and say, I'm not driving what I want to drive. And I'm going to put some extra hours. And I'm going to get on my grind. I'm going to get on my hustle. That's what we live in, grind and hustle culture. It's a lot of that going on. I live where I want to live. I eat the kind of foods I want to eat. And all these things, the world is pushing on our mind and is trying to get us into this whole thing where we're getting lost. And Jesus is trying to help us reframe and reset. Not from this perspective, but from a higher perspective. All right? Yeah, I was uh, looking at this, and I've studied this some, and it's more of a, from a spiritual perspective than a physical, worldly perspective. It's from God's view as God sees it, not as we see it. Yeah, absolutely. We uh, looked at the group, uh, at, at the uh, scripture, blessed are they who, no, no, I'm sorry, blessed are the poor 
in spirit, for they should, or was it blessed are the meek? Yeah, we said, blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. And we, our discussion was that as long as we are in the body of Christ's people, then we're in good shape. But if we're meek and we are outside the, the, the body or members of the body, then we, we may not be. <laughs> we, we may be in, in trouble. So being meek is a beautiful uh, characteristic if we are among our, our people. The other side of it is showing the other people who are not Christ-like how beautiful being meek is, how wonderful God's people are, how, how, how they may just overlook you. And, and when you try to do bodily harm to them, then it is, uh, they, they overlook you. But a brother that's not in the Lord, we're gonna wipe you out, you know? And so it's very important that, that we continue to show the world how beautiful and meek the Lord is, and we are his people. Amen. Okay. Denise Charles. Um, we experience Ashray in our daily lives, a uh, group um, consists, it's the reassurance that God got you. Um, one of the scriptures that was quoted was from Philippians 4, when, it's, when Paul is saying that he's learned to be abased and be abound because he can do all things through Christ who strengthens him. Uh, experiencing ashray in our daily lives is walking around or knowing assuredly that no matter what happens, God got us. And that, that you know, we don't have to spend a whole lot of time being anxious and worrying about this and worrying about that. Because for the things that we, that, that we are, that are bigger, I mean, that are more difficult for us to handle, he has it. And he gives us the strength to handle the things we can, but then when it gets beyond our control, we don't have to worry about it because he has it. Yeah. And so that's yeah. okay. Love it. Keep it up Um, Latasha Pruitt, we discussed that um, hard times allow us to understand that we are loved by God. Um, even though we're pressed down on all sides, we still um, have his favor on our life. And so some of us have identified in our own personal experience, whether it be sickness or health problems or financial problems, we, have, we are blessed because God is still with us in the middle of the storm. I pray to those who have a God that won't abandon you, even when you're struggling. Yes. Beautiful. All right. Group four. What responsibilities come along with being Ashray? So our group discussed. Uh, you have Andre Andre Long. Um, so our group discussed. You have to be uh, willing. Um, humble. Um, you have to be willing to also give 
glory to God where all blessings come from, contentment, and grateful. You know, I'm looking, I got this application where it shows all the things that he said that blessed are they, blessed are they, blessed are they. And it occurred to me what Jesus was doing was revealing who he was, what his, his nature, you know? And then I look at Second Peter chapter 1, it says, uh, God hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness, that through these, through these, ye might be partakers of the divine nature. So he was revealing his nature. And he said, the more, you, the more you be like me, the more blessed you are. highly favored? Is Barak highly favored? In that instance right there where it says comforted. Comforted is the Barak. Right. It's a blessing. But in the definition of it, it said highly favored. Mm -hmm. So highly favored is really a way to see it. That's my viewpoint. So that's, it, it almost gets us with a narrative. But when you talk about the ashray, what that is, ashray is my perspective on their life. So when I look at your life and I say you're highly favored, that's our strength. That's the way that I see your scenario. Now, how did you get to be out of faith? The Barak came upon you because God gave you comfort, or God gave you favor. So that working hand in hand, this is what Jesus wants us to see, right? We don't separate our strength from Barak. We really need both. But you just see that word blessed in isolation. That's what we need to understand. It's not
Patience. Faith works patience. Then I share what? I share. Have you I got, got it? it? Have I got it mixed up? That's all right. That's all we doing. Uh, I would say the the trying of your faith is Ashray, and the work of patience is brought. Thank you. 